Alrighty, good morning and welcome. I believe we are live, so welcome everybody online this morning and hope you're staying cool. And welcome to everybody here at Bay Springs Baptist and uh, good to have each and every person. It was a hard decision, but I, I came in and I'm thinking, should I or should I not? And I thought, well, I'll go ahead and turn the air conditioners on. <laughs> Just for you, I thought it was a good choice. That was the biggest decision I made all morning. Whether I want one tweak or two. And you know how many I got. Three. No, two. Three. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of bouncing, but not too much. Good to see everybody. Making sure everybody's in from the parking lot. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to the blessed promised land. With his eye, and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God gather, we will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Are you you're all singing? Yeah. yeah. All right, I don't hear you. Oft our cherished plans have failed, disappointments have revealed, and we wandered in the darkness, heavy hearted and alone. But we're trusting in the Lord, and according to His word, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God gather. Unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed for some thoughtless word or two. Wonder why the test when we try to do our best. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God gather, we will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. got to say is I sure hope so because I don't understand anything right now do you Woo, doggy but I just hope by and by one day we'll say oh that's why all of that happened have you ever been and I'm being honest as a, as a heart attack have you ever been in a time in your life that you just don't understand what's going on it's like, what in the world is happening? I think we're going to have some wisdom on that for you this morning from the Word of God. But it is just absolutely, every time you wake up and, and look at the paper or something, it's like, wow. Uh, I wasn't expecting that or didn't see that coming or, you know, what's going on? But there's a reason for all that. And it could be. All I got to say, you may need to start packing your bags. We're not going out back. We're going up, I got a feeling. You don't need no bags up there. You don't need no bags up there because I don't want any of this old stuff up there. Yeah. I want all new fresh wardrobe. <laughs> and white robe. Okay, well, I'm going to be excited. I better not start going. I was sinking deep in sin.
all three verses in there? Okay, good remember. Boy, I can't find my car when I park it in at the mall. Now I can't remember how many verses, huh? Oh, I wore that beeper out. If one for that, I wouldn't be able to find it even where I, I live. Just what floor did I park on, huh? Take the last car. That works. All righty. If you would, get your, uh, your bulletins there. We've got some things we want to let you know about and tell you about. First of all, we want to just uh, lift up some people. and There's, there's all the birthdays for the, the month of July, so we try to put those on there. And if we miss anybody, let us know so we can make sure we don't miss you again. And uh, just be praying for those. I think it, it's just kind of neat. You don't have to go out and give big presents. Just pray for them on that day. They need to have a good day. And, and uh, I thought I'd put the sunshine there because it's going to be a burner. We, here we are in June, and I don't know what the dog days are going to be because we're not even close to dog days. Hey, kids. How are you? Look, look at this little boy here. They just look like, I'm not going to make eye contact with him. I love it. Tell you what, we need to pray for uh, uh, Mike Reedus' uh, older brother, right? Passed away. And uh, he's already on his way there, right, to Kansas? Um, and you guys will be following up? I'm not going to. Okay. So we're like, they have right. to okay, be praying for them that, that all goes well and uh, just give them mercy and, and uh, traveling grace that everything goes safe on that. Um, also, be lifting up Gloria Mays. Um, they really thought that she would have uh, by, bypass this week, and I guess it's just uh, two blocks. Uh, and there's a complete paragraph on, on that, uh, everything for that. So be lifting that up that what they're going to do tomorrow is put stents in that has some type of maybe a filtering system that will hopefully relieve some pressure that's going on inside of her heart. And they're trying to clear all this up so she can actually have the transplant. And, you know, so when I heard about the bypass, it's like, well, that will take care of what will get them to this next stage, but they just can't get to that next stage. So keep praying for Glory and Jay, uh, reaching out to them, cards, prayers, phone calls. Uh, I, we just need to continue. That's the that's where the power's at in, in prayer, and uh, continue to to uh, pray for the ones that's down there under our family of friends like Bill and Quinn and Danny, and keep lifting them up. They had a good week, I guess, in school. Uh, it's hot, but you guys constructed all kinds of stuff. Great. 100 plus campers. 100 plus campers. And I had other kids. I know I was talking to Jack one day and I couldn't hardly hear him. <laughs> he said, You're going to have to talk up, Pastor, because I can't hear you. All I could hear was kids, which I love. Uh, that's awesome. Um, anybody else we need to lift up in prayer? I know there's some other things going on, but we're not. Uh, some things just wants to be private. Everybody good? All right. Want to? Uh, we'll do this now instead of before uh, offering. Um, <clears throat> we mentioned about the building, and I, I'm from, and I don't want to throw out dates because I, I, that's always been. The, I don't know if you're from Southern Illinois like me, but when you have a goocher, that means you said something that you probably shouldn't have said, and it ended up jinxing <coughs> you. you know, I don't want to gooch it, but um, so maybe we could get error going on out there. Uh, tomorrow or Tuesday or this week anyway, and that's that's a key. Uh, and if we get that, then we can start manipulating things around and getting the chairs in there and getting all that out of the, the controlled storage uh, up, up, up by the beltway. Um, and then, then at that point, uh, the boring of the, the, the water line, uh, the garlic going to be doing some other things. But with that, we are in the last, I would say, lap and we're getting close, we're getting to where we can see the finish line. Um, we 
or obviously, as my little uh, speech head or sermon head was last week, we're needing all the funds we can get. We're watching every dollar that goes out because every dollar that comes in is vital for us to be able to cross the finish line because all these bills are going to be starting to come due. We do have a, a generous offer for some folks that's going to match giving. And uh, I think we've all decided that we're going to do this throughout starting today, throughout the, uh, the month of July, uh, matching, uh, for instance, if you give a dollar, they're going to match it with half of that with 50 cents. So it's going to kind of give a 50 cent upgrade to your donation uh, for us to be able to reach for what goal we need on the finances up to $100,000. So uh, that's a wonderful gift uh, that has been given by some people. Uh, that are watching and caring and loving our, our place. So uh, if you want to be part of that, it's just going to kind of, uh, we're trying to get, the need is immediate. That's about as much as I can say any more than that. Um, we're not at the Band-Aid stage, we're at the tourniquet stage. So uh, you know, anything that you can do to help, and all I ever ask for is for you to pray about it and give from your heart. And that's all that we can say because you've been so absolutely giving through this uh, incredible battle that we've had. And as we're going to talk about this morning, uh, that we've talked about the last weeks, this isn't physical, folks. We think it's about money. It's spiritual. And I know our Lord Jesus Christ is the victor at the end. All we need to do is be faithful. And that's all we can ask of anybody. So if that entices you or impresses you or encourages you, uh, I've done my job. Uh, just uh, continue to give and support in not only your finances but also your prayers and also in grace from because we're getting to the point maybe some inspections and things of that order so we need grace from that so we can actually be open when we're ready to open and uh, our, our goal is to start school there and that's what our goal is and that, I'm hoping that happens uh, so school can actually be in the new building uh, with running stools and air conditioning. Wouldn't that be awesome to have indoor air and indoor plumbing? But anyway, so uh, if you have any questions, I don't want you to go, oh, there he goes again. Ask me, and if I don't have the answer, I'll get the answer to you probably within the hour. Uh, we're transparent about everything as we can be. So uh, just when the offering plate goes around, just remember that and anything that you can do, we'd appreciate it, okay? Thank you for that. Um, in, in another topic, uh, Gene asked me about it. That's why we're bringing it up. To my knowledge, my book is printed and, and uh, being boxed up now, so it will be here either next week or the following week. You can actually go online right now uh, on Amazon. You can't buy it because it's in a pre-order stage, and we'll talk about all that later. But you just type in when the dark clouds come by Gregory Williams, and you at least get to see the cover. And uh, that's been... I made the mistake of the other day saying, boy, I feel like I've birthed a baby. And the female with me said, oh, no, you have not. <laughs> so I will never say that again. But I guarantee you, it feels like something like that. And I said, well, okay, I feel like I've had another open heart surgery uh, because I've experienced that uh, writing a book. And then I've been commissioned uh, by Big Lots, a company that owns... Uh, that runs a mental health uh, initiative, which is awesome. They built an entire hospital in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, that we had them all on the radio show not too long ago. And I'm being commissioned uh, to have another book done by the end of the year. Uh, so I've got to get early morning and typing, and that'll be called Hiding in the Darkness for Men uh, and Boys that Have Been uh, Hurt and Abused and how it's different for men. So uh, be praying for that if you would. I, I'd appreciate that. All right, let's take a little bit more, and then we'll do one more, and then we'll take up an offer and answer that, okay? I get all the announcements? We do want you to be praying. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why I have to come all the way back here. Be praying uh, for the new deacons that will be coming on board. Uh, I will go ahead and officially, I guess it's not a secret anymore, they have been approved by the committee, and we will present them to the church at a church conference meeting that we'll let you know about. 
but those three deacons, uh, potential deacons to be, is uh, Larry, Larry Magnus, remember Larry was here, yeah Larry, uh, Jack Manley, and Sam Snodsmith will be the three that's going to be presented to the church uh, for your up or down vote. Uh, the committee has drilled them, grilled them, and sliced and diced them, and uh, we feel like they're good candidates for your uh, consideration. So we'll be doing that and let you know what meeting that'll be coming up on soon. So I wanted to just kind of let you know that, so you can be praying for them. And got some good men. <coughs> I'm kind of scared about myself because. Uh, I'm awful, I'm awful talkative today. And that may not be a good thing. I don't know why. Could be, could be trouble. Oh, Monica's leaving. She heard they got up left. <laughs> oh, no, she'd get more comfortable. Please come forward. That would be awesome. <clears throat> I was going to put a suit on this morning. And I thought, I'm just going to put jeans on. It's awful hot. Yes. And I don't know if the suit's hot or cool, but I just. I'm more comfortable. I didn't want to do this. I, I just didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Either. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and talk about yourself. I just didn't feel like doing it. You know, Philip, you got a verse in you. Are you kidding? This is something that you want to just. I, I got. A, I just got a feeling. You know, because every now and then, this is funny. Because you, well, I'll do a sermon, and it'll be exactly what your Sunday school lessons are. It's like, isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit just brings all that stuff together. So when the Holy Spirit nudges me, or I get that thought, I think, I got a feeling you got one that I need to hear. What would that be? <clears throat> Take your pick. Well, the Ephesians come to mind. Oh, we're going to be in Ephesians today. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to go to the second chapter, the 8, 9 verse. It says, By grace oh. are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not by words. At least any man should boast. And the next verse says, for we were created for 
we are his handiwork created for good works. So uh, I'm praying that we uh, will do the good works that God has called us to do because he has placed it in every heart. And as Ecclesiastic says in the third chapter, the 12th verse, he's placed everything in man's heart that he will not know the beginning or the end of it. So God has made everything good. It's a purpose for everything that he's made. And that's Ecclesiastes 3 what? Uh, 12. <coughs> you sure it's 12? Close. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I love you. Wait, would you just bless the offering, please? May, may God bless you. May God prosper you. May God just uh, bless all the ministries that these go to and, and everything that it helps. May God just bless uh, the receiving of the offerings. When? We thank you now, Father, for this day. Thank you for the privilege of being able to attend Faith Spring Baptist Church today. Welcome and worship and honor our risen Savior. Our Father, we're glad for the visitors that are here today, our Father, to our church. Also, we're glad for the regular members that are here, gratefully on each Sunday. Our Father, we pray for this offering, and may we use it to the best of our ability to carry on your work here at Faith Spring. Go with us now this week, Father. Forgive us for our many sins against thee. Yes. Guide, guard, and direct us in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. These things we ask in your precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you.
Jesus right now. If somebody just wants to stand up and just do a little pop praise, where would you be without the Lord right now? Anybody? We all ought to be on our feet right now. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> yes, Gilbert. And then we'll go to Jack. Go. Do what? I would be in hell. You'd be in hell? Okay. Very good. Jack? Well, I don't know where I'd be but because of the love of a sister that she had for her family. I know where I'm going. There you go. Amen to that. Amen. Without him, where would you be? Anybody else? I don't want to know. You don't want to know. Don't even want to think about it. Larry? Well, I would not be married to my wife because we were uh, <laughs> going together just as friends, not even dating or anything. She said, I will not marry anybody who is not a godly man. Amen. So I decided Great to call. become a godly man. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing what the love of a woman can do. <laughs> Amen. I feel like Bob Eubanks now on Newlywed Game, ain't eh? uh, Amen. Anybody else? Don't want to cut anybody you off. Know, yeah, Jack. If I hadn't gotten saved, then I wouldn't have been able to share with my granddaughters that I've led to the Lord the faith in Jesus Christ. And I think about the number of lives that our lives can touch that we forget about. All of us, I'm sure, someone. And when we get to heaven, we'll see those. Yeah, you know, there's that song, Thank You, that Ray Bolts did, that when we get to heaven, there's going to be this sea of these people that we led, touched, influenced. And God knows who and when and how. Uh, that, the thing that doesn't bother me, but it concerns me, is I hope I touched all those that I was intended to. A few years ago, and I probably should, but a few years ago, when I was going to college. That was more than a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that on camera. That was for a few decades ago. Oh, a few decades ago. There you go, around and around. God impressed on my heart to witness to this young lady. She was 19, 20 years old. Letter to the Lord. But just a few years ago, right before we joined here, a gentleman called me and wanted to know if I was the Jack Manley and he gave the background of where the timing and stuff. I said, yeah, that's me. He says, I've been calling all over the U.S. to try to find you. And I don't know if you remember, he gave me her name. He said, you led her to the Lord. And she had just passed away. But on... But on her deathbed, she asked, I, I can't remember if it's her dad or her cousin or her brother, or her, would you find him and let him know, thank you for him sharing the Lord. Amazing. And it just, it moves. 
on your heart when you realize that the people that sometimes we don't think about that we touch and just a passing moment sometimes how it influences their life for eternity it sure does yes, and uh, so if I wasn't saved that little gal probably, maybe God would have put it on somebody else's heart I trust he probably would have yeah. but that goes to what you were saying when God presses your heart to say something to do something we need to do it absolutely because, because it's life and death that's right in some cases and anybody that, else it meant a lot to me yeah that, that's, that's an awesome story anybody else everybody say no he's already started to play the piano <laughs> sing this from your heart Jesus Jesus Jesus, because I think that's important, obviously, and I don't want to give everybody the wrong impression of who we're going to talk about now, but I think it's important right now when we talk about in the spiritual warfare gamut, <clears throat> battle, that we don't overlook who we're battling. And I, I get this every time I do this on a Wednesday night or uh, I, I don't know if I've done this many times during Sunday morning service. But we're going to talk about the enemy today. And this may make you feel uncomfortable. I get people that say a lot of times when I, I do this, why are we going there? Why can't we just ignore it uh, and it'll go away? Let's just leave them alone. Don't give him any praise and glory. Let me assure you, we're not giving the gentleman any praise and glory. Uh, we're going to expose him for what he is. And when we get down here, this is pretty well, I think, the, uh, the, the outline that we're trying to hit today. And, and uh, people are liking this, and people are telling me different things, but this is where we're going right now uh, with it until we get in the new building. We'll have it up on the big screens. But... Um, I think it's important that we understand. If I, I don't want to get political, and I don't want this clipped and then uh, soundbited into the wrong things on TikTok or whatever these goofy things are. But if we think uh, the overturning of Roe versus Wade this week is really about abortion. You're crazy. If you think these rulings about guns and the freedom of carrying guns and all of that is really about just guns, you're crazy. Because can't you see what's happened? It doesn't matter what it is. It's 
two-sided, no matter what. They don't care about facts. No one cares about the Constitution anymore. Mm -hmm. They just want to make sure they're right and how dare us. I don't care what the Constitution says. It's what, basically what they're saying when they just land blast some of this stuff. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to take a stance on anything, and, and I work in an OB-GYN uh, department, and I get doctors that have come in and want my opinion. And I said, you know, I don't get paid for my opinion. And you're not going to hear my opinion. You do what you need to do, and I'll do what I need to do. Because I, I think, but it, to me, this is spiritual. Amen. This is setting our country up for exactly what needs to be in place, not only here, but in the world, for us either be united or divided so whatever happens can take place. This is God orchestrating from behind the scenes but we look at it as, what in the devil is going on? Well, he's having a, a rampant, he's having a party thinking he's got everybody where he wants them. But I want to let you know at the end of this, at the end of this, the Lord wins. I've read the last chapter. The victory is already ours. And I think when we look at it this way, a lot of times just sit back and go, listen to it. Watch what they're doing. Watch what happens after any kind of any decision is made. I think we'll take out parking lots down, uh, par parking uh, meters away from a certain uh, area, of Rice Village Mall. And then all of a sudden there's people protesting out there. Oh, we got to have a parking meter. It's, it's, it's causing division, confusion, disgruntledness. Now, Go back in your notes if you've been taking notes. What's part of spiritual warfare? Division. If he can get us divided, it'll work. And he causes that. So in this, we're going to be looking at the reality of him. We're going to be looking at the nature of him. We're going to be looking at the personality of him. And we're going to do a lot of scriptures. So I want to... If, Michael has uh, the first one. We're just going to throw this one up on screen. Oh, did I lose it? No, oh, no, there it is. Matthew 5. No, uh, Matthew 25. It's 25, Michael. I'm sorry. Matthew 25, verse 41. I'll find that real quick here. And God bless Michael. He's back here going to be typing these in as fast as he can. He got it. We oh, got it. Wow, he's that faster than me. Yeah, it had to start. I want you to see, and this is all kind of prelude. Then he will say to those on his feet, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell wasn't ultimately prepared for those that didn't know God, that don't accept God. And I want to let you know right now, hell isn't prepared for you because you've done something wrong. Hell is there because you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. One and only. That's it. Oh, I've done the, I've done the worst possible thing. I'm going to hell. I, I, it's because of what I've done. No, it's for what you haven't done. It's another way, and we're going to talk about temptation, uh, I think probably next week. Uh, it's a way the devil manipulates truth. And what's the hardest thing to find right now in this world? Truth. <coughs> Truth. And I know maybe it's not even appropriate, but Mike, how many from the previous people that's been working on our building have we had the lack of truth? It's amazing, isn't it? It's like, how does these people ever stay in business? I don't think a lot of them are anymore. Truth is so hard to find. So I love that verse. But find uh, the First Peter five, eight, and nine. We need to know the truth about Satan. We need to know the truth about his army. We need to know the truth about the temptation of who we are battling with, 
so we know better how to overcome him. And this is 1 Peter 5, 8, and then he'll kick 9 up when we get that. Why? So we can be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, making it clear who the bad guy is in this world. Your enemy is the devil. And he is going around prowling like a roaring lion, looking for someone that he can completely devour. Keep going. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. He's making the case here that there is a devil. Now some people want to tell you, and you'll get this amazing, if you want to do this, if you go over to the Mexican restaurant, some just try to just go up to a visitor, uh, some stranger, and start talking about it, you'll get all kinds of different concepts of, oh, I don't believe there's a hell. I don't believe there's a devil. I don't believe in all that. It's just mankind being uh, the, the people that they are. We, I don't believe in all of that. Would you believe in heaven? Oh, yeah, I, I believe in heaven, but I don't believe in the hell. And, and you get all of this different things and different thoughts. It's like, where is it coming from? It's the devil messing with our minds. So I think it's, it's worth uh, a week or two, half hour, a couple times, to talk about what he is up to. The denial of Satan's reality usually takes form in considering the idea of Satan as a personification of evil, but not actually being a real person, a real being. And if you think that, eh, you're wrong. He exists. He is real. And we're going to talk about the nature, the, the things that's going to be awesome when you find out, well, wait, he can't do that. I've been giving him power for that, and he, he doesn't even have the power to do that. And as we look at this, Satan is not just something evil. It's not just an impersonal influence or a bad thought that you have after eating too many tacos. But he's a real entity and a fallen angel that has supernatural powers that we need to be aware of. He is also not the gatekeeper and the manager of hell. Hell is his destination. That's where he's going. He's not going to be in charge there. God is in charge there in all of his glory. And the devil uh, is not the one that confines the people or holds them in hell. He doesn't have that kind of power. Those who populate hell are those that have rejected Jesus Christ and the fallen angels that we'll talk about. Lord. Okay, the reality is what we just talked about. And in that, I want to let you know that in the Old Testament, seven different instances of Satan being in existence I think this is important. This is just not a thought. This is just not an evil spirit that, that we're thinking, oh, well, this is just a bad feeling that we're having. And then every New Testament writer talks of Satan. And even when we see Jesus having a face-off in the desert, it was one person. Satan came to him. He was there. It wasn't just Jesus in the desert, laying back going, oh, I feel hungry, oh, I'm having a bad thought. Oh, maybe I should go do this, or maybe I should turn that stone into bread, and I'm just having evil thoughts. He was having a conversation one-on-one -on -one with a person, and it was Satan himself, and that's so important. It's not just an evil thought or process or influence. Amen. It is a reality. That's right. But I want to let you know, I have never seen him, or has Satan probably never tempted me? Because he has limitations. So it's other things that are tempting me and hurting me and influence me. But the existence of Satan 
uh, is absolutely a reality. Those seven Old Testament books are these. Genesis, 1 Chronicles, Job, Psalm, Isaiah, Isaiah has a lot, Ezekiel, and Zechariah. And I think that's important that we, we know that. And in 25 of 29 passages, uh, you speak of Satan. And in 25 of those 29 passages that are speaking of Satan, those words are actually coming from Jesus himself. Then we see the nature of Satan. Do you have John 1.1? 1, 1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. It was with God, and the Word was God. Can you keep going on that without messing you up, Mike? You can't, and I, Monica called me on this one week. She said, you missed, you missed us first. I want you to see how all this works. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. The nature of Satan is all things were made from him. He's a created creature. He wasn't in existence before God created him. I want you to catch this. He wasn't just always here. Everything began with God Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. In the beginning was the Word. That was there. Truth. It was there. And it came strictly from God. God created the angels. God created the, uh, the governments. God created all of these different things. It wasn't just that the devil has that same power to be able to do that. And when you put the devil in that category, then the devil could do anything he wants, anytime he wants. And it's just not the case. He is a defeated person, but he is a created being by God. He's a creature. The first little asterisk there under the nature of Satan. And you can keep on to do this. All made through him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Then he goes on to talk about the forerunner of Jesus Christ. But you catch that? All things were made through him. Without him. The devil wouldn't exist. Satan wouldn't exist. So he is a creature. Psalm 148, 1 through 5. Write that one down. Mike's going to put it up on the screen here. 148. I knew this was going to be a different sermon today. It's going to be more teaching. It is preaching, so I may not get to yell very much. Uh, I'm sure some of you are going to be good. I'll get tired of that anyway. Praise the Lord, Psalm 148.1. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens of heaven and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created. It says right there, that the angels were created by God. That's how the devil came about. And we're going to talk about how he came about because he was one of the beautiful, most beautiful angels. He had the power to lead. The, okay, he's the choir director in heaven. 
He was in charge of music in heaven. That's why music is so powerful now. Because you hear something, and it can influence you. It can automatically. There's power in that. And because of that power through music, the devil really got big for his britches, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, he is a creature, a creative being. He is a spiritual, a spirit being. Hebrews 1, 14. Are not all angel, angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? All angels are spirit beings. Demons are called unclean spirits. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, no, we're talking about demons? Craig? Really? Absolutely. Do we really think that Jesus would take the time to have a conversation with a demon? What was it? And a young man, and, and Jesus looked around, and, and the, the demon said, Oh, Lord, we know who you are. <laughs> we know you. Please do not send us where you may be thinking about. Uh, and the, the little demons, which was a whole bunch of them. We don't know how many, but it was a whole bunch. Looked around, yeah, legion. Which I, I, that's more than one. That's an army. I mean, that, that's a that's a, a tribe. That, that's a group, huge a crowd. So we're looking around. Hey, how about those pigs? And we know the story. Jesus had a conversation with demons. So does demons exist? Absolutely. Or if we don't believe that, then we think that Jesus was just kind of had a mental breakdown. Now, don't soundbite that and put that on TikTok either. That, God, that Greg said Jesus had a mental breakdown. If you don't believe that Jesus wasn't talking to real demons, then what was going on? Then I have to take that book out, of, that page out of the book, and go, "Oh well, that wasn't that wasn't right. That was a mishap." He, no, he was just talking in general that this this boy was having issues. He was raised wrong, and it really wasn't demon possession. You see that so many times where Jesus had that interaction. And the thing that I find interesting is they know who he is. So why shouldn't we know who they are? He's a creative being, and he is a spirit. Okay? Okay? I don't know if there's another verse on that I wanted to hit on or not, but, but write down these so you'll have them. Uh, maybe we, if you want to do your own personal. But uh, Matthew 8, 16. Matthew 12, 45. Luke 7, 21. Luke 8, 2. With this thought in mind, go ahead and put up Ephesians 6, 12, Michael. Eight, two. Mm -hmm. Luke 7, 21. Luke 8, 2. Eight, two. That's under number 2, and he's a spiritual being. And under this one, too, just so we understand this, Ephesians 6, 12. For our struggle... I, I take, maybe, maybe everybody looks at me like I'm a little bit off, and I get that look, I'm, I'm getting it right now, um, <laughs> and some of you at home are rolling your eyes, and I know who you are, um, the battles that we have in this life, folks, are as physical as you think they are. What's going on, like in our country? What's going on with politics? What's going on with the racial issues? What's going on with uh, the exposure of 
uh, abuse in in churches all over the country and organizations all over the country. Amen. What's going on in all of these different things isn't so much that men or women are just sick, which some of us write it off as that. It's that we're in a battle. Yes, and sir. the same right here right. is a struggle isn't against each other. So when we start doing this, we all need to go, hey, wait, take a step back and breathe. Wait, what's this really about? It's the devil wanting us not to agree, not to accomplish, to be divided, to be confused, to be misled, to be so manipulated that we can't get anything accomplished and it and if you don't see it as spiritual you're really missing the boat and even the issues that you have with your very own kids right now may not be the issue with the child it's more and likely with an issue of you or theirs pride and it becomes an issue of spiritualness of weight. If you would just break that issue and cross the line and dare to follow where the Lord's leading you, mending fences could be a lot easier than what they are. And I think a lot of times we miss this boat so much. It's not against flesh and blood. It's against the rulers. And we talked about this verse last week against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. They're battling for our very lives each and every day. And we see this in probably the oldest book they claim that could be written in our Bible is Job. And we see Job as a perfect example of this. The devil, again, not just Jesus talking to or God talking to himself, uh, on his throne going, okay, I'll just have a conversation with myself. He's having a conversation with the devil himself. And God says, hey, you think you got all this power? Consider my servant, Job. And then it all breaks loose. I wonder sometimes, this is where my weird mind works, I wonder some days if God isn't having a conversation with somebody and God says, hey, have you thought about Greg today? He'll handle that temptation. He'll overcome that. Give him a chance. I'm going to give him an opportunity to prove his love and dedication to me and put you back in hell where you belong. Go ahead and do it. Have you ever thought about there may be a conversation about that? About you? Boy, that would make you wake up and smell the coffee, don't it? Well, I don't know. I may not be important enough for that conversation, but I guarantee you the demons are out there working. And I guarantee you there are few that's working just on me. And they have worked on me from the very beginning I ever was birthed into this earth. And it's the same ones that deals with me each and every day. And there's a game plan of how it's going to destroy me. And how it may destroy you. And sometimes, sometimes, don't think I'm crazy. All it takes is a realization that, wait, this isn't me. I am a masterpiece. I am a born-again believer in Christ died for me. I died. This is a struggle with the demons and the evil forces, and I already have power on that. Get out of my way, and I'm going to just keep on trucking. And my mood will immediately change. It's not because I have those mantras that I, and I get in some kind of uh, dog position in yoga and... It's not all about that. Sometimes it's just the realization of recognizing that it's a spiritual battle. Now the last thing in this number two that I love is he's a 
creature. He's a spirit being. He has limitations. And you want to write these down. Satan does not have the same power that God does, which God has the power of an omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Satan doesn't have any of those. Satan doesn't know everything. He's not all-knowing. That's why you end up falling in the same or stepping in the same pile over and over and over. Why? Because you stepped in it the last 10 years. Satan didn't have to change his game plan. He just keeps throwing it out there, and you just keep stopping in it. Sorry for the ugly analogy. But it's the truth. He doesn't know whether you're going to or not. He can't say that the future is going to be, I know Greg's going to do that, and next week he's going to do that, and because he does that next week, this is going to be the result. Satan doesn't know that. Satan thinks he's still going to win at the end. And that's not going to happen. He can't even predict the future when he has the book that he can read himself. And I'm sure can recite it better than Philip. Which I can't hardly imagine that, but he probably could. So he doesn't have that power. He's not those three things. He is, though, Ephesians 2.2. 2. In these limitations, he also has power. Ephesians 2.2. 2. He's typing that one in. In which you used to live, when you followed the ways of the world, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, and the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Satan has the power to be the prince of the power of the air. Him and his army, him and his demons. He runs his kingdom. But he doesn't have those powers that God has. Satan's limited. And there's some verses I want you to write down that shows this limitation. There's a promise in Scripture. Greater is he that is in us than is he that is in the world. That's 1 John 4.4, 4, right? Uh, it's 1 John 4.4, uh, 4, that's correct. Okay, so I'm not making it. I, I, I thought I would make sure I wrote them down right. 1 John 4.4. 4. Write down also Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. James 4, 7. Now, we're going to stop there. Um, what, did, what did we do with all of this? We're not doing this to give... Satan any praise. We're doing this to hopefully open my eyes up with what I got to deal with the rest of the day. I say, oh great, you got a bad day coming? What's happened? I have no clue. But if I don't have my eyes open, I may fall right into the trap. Because I promise you that the tracks that's laid out for me are there. I promise you that the demons are of Satan that's up there that are assigned to you never take a day off. And they don't go to bed at midnight just because you went to bed at 11.30. They're working on a plan to get inside of your mind and manipulate something, and they will always, this is so key, and I don't have that in the outline, but this is so key, I think this is Holy Spirit bringing it in, he will always work on the weakest link to get your attention. So if you are so based and solid in Jesus Christ, and nothing can get through your barrier, and your protector is all up, and that's shielded, and that's going to be the last sermon, and it may take... 
eight, but it's going to be the last part of the, the, the series, is that armor. You have every piece in place. And we'll talk about what every piece stands for and how it protects and how important it all is. And some of us are walking around with pieces that we've left at home. And no wonder we do the things we do. If you have all of that in place, then he'll work on your spouse. If they don't have it all in place, let's say they do. Then they'll work on one of your children, one of your grandchildren. If they don't have it all under control, or if they do, then he'll work on your boss that will end up just doing anything. Or that one person, you're whistling Dixie, and the one person that just gets behind your armor and dances on a nerve, and you're just saying, hey, I'm so strong in the Lord right now, and then there they are. What in the world? That's how it works. Amen. That's how it works. So you need to be alert, sober, and aware. Because the devil is prowling around like a lion. And he will look for anything to be able to get behind the armor that you think is so solid to get us to stumble or doubt or wonder. Or question. Or start not trusting. Pushing away. And trust is my biggest issue in life. I don't trust, I don't trust, I don't trust, I don't trust. <laughs> and I, I, I'm working on that. And every time I build that back up, the devil knows I'll just have somebody close to him lie to him once. And then that trust me goes with everybody. Because I trust you, you didn't do anything wrong. Just like everybody else. And the devil knows. He knows that's weakness. And the kicker of it is the army knows yours. So when we go out through these doors here in a minute, and I'm hopefully it's in a very short minute, because <laughs> I'm done. All I'm asking you to do this week. It's to be alert. Watch. Hopefully, you don't all drive crazy like I do, but even in my craziness of my driving, when I'm in a school zone, I watch for kids. Do you not? Folks, you're in a Satan zone. You better be watching for the things to come out in front of you so you're prepared to overcome them or slow down to take it all in and understand, I know exactly what you, this is from. This is from Satan, his forces, all of that stuff. And I'm going to be alert this week like I never have. And then let's see what next week brings. See what this week brings for you. And if you don't handle frustrations, fights, disagreements, being upset so easy, wrong attitudes, a little differently. Sit back and go, Lord, I'm giving this to you. You've made me more than a conqueror. I don't have to fall for this same trick again. Help me get through this. Help me get past this so I can put the devil in the place that he belongs. The Lord, we come to you right now. I thank you that you are the champion. I thank you, Lord, that the devil didn't get second place. He didn't make top ten. You are the Lord of all. And I thank you for that. Lord, show us how we have that kind of power that you can give us through your word of prayer, of being with you, of putting all that armor on piece by piece and carefully. And Lord, most of all, just recognizing, show us, Lord, open our eyes 
a little bit this week to what is really happening around us. What is really happening in our world. And it's not just about wrong politicians, wrong people in government, wrong people running nations, but it's spiritual. Help us all to get on our knees and humble ourselves. Repent and call on your name in a powerful way. Lord, we may have to deal with that this week. There may be major battles for some of us. For people that's online that don't understand what's going on in their world. May they trust in you and still believe in you and give it all to you. Because without you, Lord, we would be nothing. We give you the praise and the glory. Be with us now as we go out into this dark world. May we be a light. Yes. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. God bless you. Have an awesome, awesome day. Stay cool. Thank you for being with us online today. We'll see you next week right here. Yes, senior. I would just designated vision fund, vision. building fund, anything of that order would work. And then I did I did miss an uh, announcement that I promised. If you want to pick up one of these on your way out, also this talks about our 105th anniversary. That's going to be coming up in January. We already have it set in the new building. But the important thing is this paragraph down here. Make sure you grab one of these on your way out because they want memories of what you remember about all of those years that you have been here, or even in this last few years. Write that down and give it to Annie. They're going to publish a book uh, for that to be a special giveaway uh, on that day. Okay? God bless y'all. Have an awesome day. Thank you for who you are. I love you.